Okay. okay, thanks very much, afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, the Premier is currently uh, out in the South Brisbane area inspecting flood damage in that vicinity uh, and also uh, earlier today visited the evacuation centre uh, at QE2 Stadium. Uh, I just want to acknowledge also the presence here of uh, Michelle Baker from Deaf Services Queensland and thank Deaf Services Queensland uh, for, the, for the great work that they're doing in spreading the message to the hearing impaired community. Uh, to start off firstly, the river height in Brisbane is expected to reach around 4.2 metres uh, at 4pm today. So the very clear message to communities uh, in and around Brisbane, particularly those close to waterways, is that uh, this flood event is not over. Uh, despite the bright sunny days and sun that's out there, uh, there are still very high risks in and around the Brisbane uh, suburb and area and we really do need people to pay clear attention to uh, radio bulletins and the advice that's been provided by emergency services agencies. I can confirm uh, in terms of the death toll following the uh, Toowoomba and Lockyer Valley tragedy that is now increased to 15. Uh, that includes uh, a male person uh, that was found at Durack this morning uh, and police have now discovered the, the body of a male person in Mile Creek uh, to the northeast of Dolby. Uh, bringing the total to 15 deaths uh, from uh, since that terrible event, uh, and the total number of missing people is 61, uh, and we still have grave fears for another 12 people. There are some significant developments taking place at Gundawindi, uh, where the peak at the river is expected to uh, come overnight. Uh, Gundawindi is protected by a levee system, uh, the advice we have to date, despite the fact that there will be a record peak uh, in the river at Gundawindi, is that the levee will hold. Uh, but of course Gundawindi uh, is quite a significant hotspot at the moment uh, and we are closely watching developments and in close consultation with uh, the local disaster group and district disaster group and also uh, the hydrology advice through the Bureau of Meteorology. I can also announce uh, today that uh, the Queensland Police Service uh, is forming a task force, task force uh, ta Operation Safeguard. Uh, Operation Safeguard will be a task force of 200 police uh, who will focus attention on enhancing uh, security and safety in the Brisbane and Ipswich flood affected regions. Uh, that task force will comprise of 100 police uh, from Queensland and 100 police from a contingent coming from New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia. Uh, and their sole purpose will be to focus on those flood affected communities, particularly or most specifically in areas where people have had to evacuate their homes. And I might ask the Commissioner to say a few more words about that and then we're happy to answer questions. Uh, thank you, Minister. Um, we're very conscious of the fact that um, once the waters recede, and we think that'll be hopefully around uh, Monday, uh, that people will not be able to re enter their homes in some of the uh, worst flood affected areas and it could be, in fact, weeks before they're able to do that. Uh, so we're forming this task force of 200 officers, which we'll maintain initially for at least three weeks. As the Minister indicated, that'll be made up of 100 Queensland Police officers and 100 from interstate jurisdictions, initially uh, from New South Wales, Victoria and South Australia. Um, there'll be perhaps a small advance party over the weekend, but m nearly all of those police will arrive in Brisbane on Monday. They'll be briefed on Monday afternoon and they'll start work with our officers on Tuesday. We'll work them in patrol cars, two in each car, one from Queensland, one from interstate in each vehicle. Uh, that will give us a good spread and a sufficient spread of police and, and patrol vehicles, we believe, to maintain a 24-7 patrol presence in every one of the flood-affected uh, localities in Brisbane and Ipswich. Uh, for several weeks. Uh, if need be, we'll maintain and continue that, but one would be hopeful that after a few weeks most people will be able to re-enter their homes. Uh, there's been very few instances of looting reported and certainly we hope that continues. And I think it's important to stress that of the four and a quarter million, in Queen, million people in Queensland, the number of people who engage in looting type activities is very, very, very small. Uh, but nonetheless, um, for security, for the safety and for the confidence of, of the public, we believe this is an important thing to do. Uh, so happy to take uh, any questions you may have. Uh, 
There was a body of a man found in a car reported overnight in Ipswich. Is, is there any latest on that investigation, whether or not it's been ruled out that we've flagged it? No, that, that particular matter um, requires further investigation. Uh, and as soon as we're in a position to advise you of the circumstances as to whether that is a flood-related death or not, we'll do so. Uh, but at this stage, it's not clear as to whether it is or not. Commissioner, are you looking at any curfews or do you need any extra powers to deal with what, what could come? Uh, no, we have, uh, we have sufficient powers at the moment, and, and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the people of Queensland. Uh, there have been very few cases where we've actually had to use the powers that we have. Most people, um, whilst understandably at times reluctant perhaps to, to leave their homes, have been able to be persuaded to do that, and, and in the main people have been very helpful and cooperative and supportive. Um, I don't personally believe there's a need for a curfew. I think that with the patrols that we'll put into place, uh, I think that'll be enough. Could I take this opportunity, though, perhaps to again thank the media for your wonderful support and encourage anyone who has any concerns about looting to ring Crime Stoppers on 1800 333 000 and we'll follow that up straight away. Now, there were three men charged and arrested with looting yesterday. Have any others been arrested today? Not to my knowledge, but uh, as you'll appreciate... Um, this is a very dynamic environment that we're operating in. So if that changes, we'll let you know straight away. And uh, you said you found a, another dead body out in Mile Creek. Where are you focusing your search and rescue efforts today? Can you give us a little bit more detail about that? We're hearing that there could be a, a mass of bodies under the Grantham Bridge. Well, I hope there's not. Uh, but the, the main search area is the Lockyer Valley. Uh, and that's an extensive search. Um, that search will extend from the bottom of the range at Withcott and Murphy's Creek uh, right through to the end of the Lockyer Valley towards Ipswich, and it will cover all um, open country, all rivers, creeks and tributaries, uh, and there are over 200 people involved in that search. How difficult uh, is it searching those areas? How difficult is it those areas? It's, in some uh, instances, it's extremely difficult. The area around Murphy's Creek is quite hilly, if not describably mountainous. Um, the, the search difficulty is compounded by the fact that, that sadly, uh, in Grantham, there are homes that have been demolished. Um, and so it's not just a question of going into a house and looking in the rooms, that the house has been, houses have been demolished. Uh, and additionally, we had reports, uh, which are probably true, that people were actually swept out of homes. Uh, and if that's the case, they could be in creeks, they could be in rivers, they could be in paddocks or field covered by debris. So, yes, thank you for the question and an extraordinarily difficult set of circumstances. And that's one of the reasons why such a large number of people and assets are involved. Uh, well over 100 from the Australian Defence Force soldiers, uh, a number of police and a number of SES personnel as well, so over 200 people in total. And we're very grateful for the ADF for their assets, both their aerial assets, such as helicopters, uh, and also their ground assets, such as their vehicles that can cover any sort of terrain. Uh, but that's the main area of search. And that search will go on for at least several days. That can't be done uh, quickly. How big an area is that? Like, kilometre-wise, how big an area is that? Uh, well, it's quite significant. I'd have to come back to you with a precise area, but if you could visualise an area broadly of the Lockyer values, Valley, starting from the bottom of the Toowoomba Range yeah, just towards for it. Around the country. I'm sorry? Just for other people yeah. watching around the country. Yeah, sure. Um, and why don't we get a map of the area and provide it to the media? I wouldn't like to guess, um, and uh, so if, you, if we could come back to you on the search area, and both in terms of a map and the dimensions. Do we know the age of the latest victim? Uh, it's it's uh, at a place, as the Minister said, called Myor Creek, which is um, north-east of Dolby. Um, and um, at this stage, uh, all I can say is that it's an adult male person whose body's been found. Unfortunately, identification and age haven't been confirmed as yet. Minister, are there any concerns about uh, businesses profiteering, charging extra for essential items like water or food? And, and what, um, what can fair trading do to prevent that sort of behaviour? Uh, well, I haven't had any direct reports of that at this stage, but obviously where people feel that there may be profiteering occurring, they do need to report that directly through to Fair Trading. But at this stage, thankfully, uh, we haven't had any uh, reports of that, to my knowledge. Apparently yeah. the Red Cross is saying that the, uh, a lot of people are turning up at evacuation centres with clothes and, and blankets, but they're saying that they don't want, want them to come to those evacuation centres. What can people do to help should they not do that? 
Uh, we, we understand that people do want to help as much as possible, and in all communities across Queensland where we've had uh, these significant, significant flood events, we've had people turn up with lots of goods, uh, clothing, uh, foodstuffs, etc., and that's, that's appreciated. However, um, we do ask that if people do have such goods that they contact their local disaster group or their council uh, before they bring them. Uh, it can be quite overwhelming trying to manage uh, the large stocks of uh, materials that are brought, the best thing people can do if they do have spare cash uh, is to donate to the Premier's Appeal. I understand that uh, some people are doing it tough, uh, but uh, if that would be the best form of assistance that people can provide at the moment. Uh, if there is a need for additional things such as clothing, blankets, uh, we'll put that call out at the moment. Uh, we've got sufficient supplies of those items uh, through the existing channels. How many people are in the evacuation centres currently? Do you know? Well, it's, it's, a, it's moving all the time. We have there's figures of over 4,000, um, but that's changing uh, by the minute. Uh, for example, in places like Ipswich, where there were significant numbers uh, the night before last, that's now dropping off significantly because the river has dropped. Uh, so we'll have those figures updated uh, by the end of the day, uh, but uh, it is changing significantly according to the events which are occurring in particular locations. Are there any fuel um, shortages or any food shortages in the city, in Brisbane? Uh, not to my knowledge. What about the debris? Well, that's a significant problem. I mean, a lot of debris, as you would have seen through uh, television coverage today, is ending up in Moreton Bay. Uh, that will continue. Uh, it's simply impossible to prevent that from occurring while uh, this extremely large volume of water is, is flowing down the Brisbane River. Uh, so that uh, will be a significant problem, uh, which uh, Port Authorities uh, and Maritime Safety Queensland will need to address, uh, particularly once the waters uh, stop flowing. But definitely uh, the river is very unsafe. There's a lot of uh, large objects uh, moving down the river. Uh, and again, we can only st uh, stress uh, the unsafe nature of being close to that or being in that uh, environment. Uh, but certainly a lot of debris and a lot of problems to rectify once uh, the floodwaters cease. Commissioner, how much sleep are police getting and how are they holding up given the task ahead of them? Uh, some of my people have been um, working on this since uh, two days before Christmas. Uh, and have put in a sustained and outstanding effort. Many have worked double shifts you know, for a long time. Might I say, though, that that's not confined to the police. That's the emergency services workers across the board, uh, and in many cases that's backed up by volunteers. The SES have been outstanding. Uh, the volunteers have been outstanding. Um, the Australian Defence Forces have been outstanding. There's been a wonderful effort here from across the board, and the Queensland community have been tremendous as well. Uh, so there's many, many people who've gone without sleep. Uh, but it is a really good point because we have to be very conscious of two things. Obviously, fatigue management. We can't have people collapsing. Uh, and the other thing is is just the, the welfare of the emergency services workers themselves. Uh, some of the emergency services workers, obviously, have encountered uh, quite difficult um, circumstances involving the deaths of children. Uh, and we're, the Minister, I know, is very mindful of that um, and we obviously will do all we can um, in terms of supporting our own people. Minister, can you paint a picture of um, what the, the task ahead is going to be like for the next couple of weeks or even months for Brisbane? Well, it's uh, as it will be in uh, Brisbane and Ipswich, as it has been and is uh, in a number of other communities throughout uh, Queensland. Uh, this is just an absolutely massive, catastrophic event. Uh, the clean-up, uh, the impact on individuals, the impact on business is just simply going to take months and months and sometimes years uh, to, to fully address. Uh, the Commissioner mentioned uh, the human toll both on uh, emergency services workers but uh, most particularly those people in the community that have been displaced, by their homes, uh, displaced out of their homes. Uh, this is just an enormous task and as well as the hard infrastructure that we need to repair, uh, a lot of focus and attention will also be put on uh, helping those individuals cope uh, with, his, which, with what is going to be an extremely difficult set of circumstances in the months ahead. Did you want to speak to that, Minister? Um, the advice that uh, is uh, been provided in terms of the island is that it is secure uh, and is under, under power, so uh, it is at this stage uh, considered to be safe in its current environment, but obviously that's uh, an issue which has been monitored uh, by the minute. Uh, additionally, the Mogul Ferry, uh, additional uh, uh, storage, additional um, uh, anchors were placed there this morning. Uh, and the advice, again, is that uh, the Mogul Ferry is safe and secure at this stage. 
Thank you, everybody.